Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you watched my original video, I quickly went over how to install RetroArch on the MVC2 cab. I have been asked a few questions about RetroArch, so I decided to upload this video. Please remember to like and subscribe. We will start off by doing the joystick and button mapping. Using the keyboard, navigate the settings, input, and port one controls. Scroll down till you get the D-pad up, press enter, and now press up on the joystick until it gets mapped. Repeat the steps for the other directions. Now to map the buttons, follow the diagram on the screen. This mapping should be good for the majority of the games, but later on in this video, I'll show you how to make further refinements. I wanted to remind you that currently, only the Player One controls work on this cab when using RetroArch. Hopefully in the near future, they'll be able to address this with a fix. All set. Now we will configure the input block timeout. Using the freshly mapped joystick, navigate the settings and latency. Scroll down till you get to input block timeout and set it to one. When the setting was set to zero, you can see that pressing two buttons simultaneously did not work properly. Now we will set the hotkey menu toggle. Navigate to Settings, Hotkeys, Menu Toggle Control Combo, and select your preferred combination. I set mine to Start plus Select. During the game, press the combination that you selected to bring up the menu. Within this menu, you'll be able to make additional changes to the controllers that are game specific. Apply the desired changes and save the game remap file. The next time you run the game, the system will use the game remap file that you saved for that specific game. Within this menu, you'll be able to take screenshots, add games to your favorites list, and depending on the core being used, you'll also be able to save states. Now to hide the screen overlay. Navigate to settings, on-screen display, on-screen overlay, display overlay, and switch it off. Now to change the UI. Navigate to settings, User Interface, Menu, select the UI that you prefer, and then restart RetroArch to apply the changes. The Ozone UI looks pretty good. The RG UI is my least favorite.
the XMB UI is my go-to to get the Sega CD and 3DO emulators running, you'll need to get the necessary BIOS files. Go to the RetroArch website, click on Help, Docs, For Users, Core Library Emulation, select the system you wish to emulate. Here it will tell you which BIOS files are required to run the emulator. Find the BIOS files online and download them to your computer. Ensure that the BIOS files are named exactly as in the documentation. Transfer the BIOS files into the micro SD card that we previously formatted in my other video and insert it into the back of the cab. Power the cab and using the keyboard, Launch File Manager Plus. Go into the micro SD card, find the BIOS file, press the spacebar to bring up the menu, copy by left clicking on it. Now go to the Home menu, Main Storage. Scroll down till you get to RetroArch. Scroll down till you get to System. Left click and paste the BIOS. Repeat the steps if necessary. Here I'll be showing the gameplay for my favorite Sega CD game, The Terminator. Overall, the Sega CD emulation runs pretty smoothly. I haven't encountered any issues yet. Here I'll be showing the gameplay from my favorite 3DO game, Road Rash. The 3DO emulation is not perfect, but it's still playable. Here is the glimpse of the 3DO core configuration on my arcade cab. So far it's running okay. If you found this video helpful, please remember to like and subscribe to the channel. Just a heads up, every now and then when you launch RetroArch, you will encounter this extracting base APK message. Unfortunately, this will reset some of the settings that we covered in this video and you will need to configure them again. Thank you for watching.